gate approach has proven valid for many years and in all sectors. However, at the end of the last century, in some sectors and in some specific time periods, turbulent context starts to emerge, undermining this approach. Turbulent contexts are characterized by a high probability that dynamics external to the project heavily impact on the project itself. Usually, these dynamics are connected either to the market or to the technology that can undergo significant variation and undermine the quality of the final output. For example, let's imagine to be developing a new product. In the middle of the development process, a competitor launches a product that incorporates a function you have not thought about. Alternatively, imagine that in the middle of the development process, a new technology allowing to connect all smart products is released, but your product is not compatible with it. In cases like this, the product you are developing could become obsolete even before being released. Situations like this can arise for every project in every sector. However, we define turbulent those sectors in which the market and technology change frequency is so high that it is almost sure that some of these significant changes will take place during the development time. Such sectors challenge the principle of anticipation and the stage gate model severely. Despite the involvement of the right stakeholders at the right time, the usage of past experience and the development of meaningful new experiments, it is impossible to precisely predict the market changes, the competitors' actions, and the technology evolutions. In these sectors, the uncertainty curve does not decrease monotonously during the project, but has continuous upward peaks. For example, we have to understand if the feature launched by the competitor that we do not have is useful and appreciated by the market. If so, we have to modify the project, even in later stages. In other words, a stage gate approach requires to freeze the concept of the project as soon as possible. For example, in the case of the development of a new product, it freezes features and performances in the early phases. This leaves the organization the right time to design, engineering, and test. There is a response time between the freezing of the concept, what we want to release, and the moment in which we can release the output to the market. In turbulent environments, this time is a risk, because changes in the market or technologies during this time will force you to go back, change the concept, and start again. To correctly manage projects in turbulent environments, it is necessary to leverage a different management principle, the flexibility. We define flexibility as the capacity to introduce changes also in the advanced project phases by limiting the impacts on time and cost. In terms of models, flexibility does not act on the uncertainty curve, but on the cost of change one, and does not act in the initial phases of the project, but in the final ones of the project. To fully understand the flexibility principle, we can analyze a historical case, the development process of Netscape. Netscape was the first commercial browser launched on the market, and the market for internet-based products and services was a highly turbulent one around the year 2000. There was a myriad of companies, from large to micro, across the world, which developed new technologies, new services, and new products. Clients were beginning to discover the existence of a new world and had no idea on how to use this to create value. Indeed, they waited for companies to tell them through their offers. Looking at the Netscape case, we observe that it looks completely different from a stage gate one. There are many beta releases which are not fully functional versions of the software released to selected users. In a beta version, some features are declared but not developed yet. Netscape did not invent the beta releases, but certainly they were amongst the first to use them in a revolutionary way. Betas were created and are still used for bug searching. In Netscape, they also use them to give the customers the experience of using a revolutionary product in order to collect early feedback from them. However, the extremely relevant thing is that these feedbacks were not collected on the final product and therefore incorporated with the next release of the browser, but were collected while the product was still in the development phase. In this way, the data gathered 
could be used to change the concept while the development process was still open. In practice, if we compare the nature of a stage gate with a flexible project, we see that the beta releases and the overlap of phases actually have the only purpose of reducing the response time and to allow the company to react to the turbulence by modifying the concept practically until the end. Flexible approaches to project management propose a different trade-off in comparison to the stage gate. The basic cost of the project would rise, since we are not anticipating all the possible constraints and risks as we would do when working with the stage gate. This means that part of the work the team is doing is not going to be actually present in the final result of the project. Still, when something changes, and in a turbulent environment this happens quite often, the cost and time of the project managed through the flexible approach tend to remain pretty close to the initial estimations. This means that this approach puts you in the position to react. Still, if the uncertainty level is low or anyhow predictable, the stage gate is definitely a better alternative, which would increase the efficiency of the project.